Welcome. Welcome, everybody. This is the top 10 most frequently asked questions about the Epson F2100 DTG printing machine. I am joined by my compadres, my amigos. We have uh, two members of the DTG Dream Team, Jeff Morgenthaler and Terry Combs. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Terry. Hey, hey Jay. Hey. Uh, listen, guys, we're excited. We've got a lot of folks tuned in. We're over 65 people live. And the title to this session really got a lot of people interested because they've got questions and we've got answers. And when I say we, I mean you. Um, a lot of folks get confused by the DTG terminology, uh, its ability to print, what it can print on, what it can't print on. You guys have been uh, in the lead for the last, let's say, what, six, seven, coming up on seven years, Terry, for you? With the uh, Epson printer, yes. And since, Jeff, four? Since printer number one. <laughs> wow. I've been with Equipment Zone for about three years. So that's that, but you, let's, let's brag on you for just both for a second. I, I don't have the exact figures and I'm not going to get to it, but it's it fair to say that you would both be responsible for a majority of the Epson F2000s and F2100s in the United States? I would say yes to that. Seems that okay. way. And both of you have been around the block prior, prior can't even speak this morning, prior to, uh, meaning you've had a DTG experience before the Epsons came out. I certainly did. Uh, I, w I was uh, with U.S. Screen uh, here in uh, in Phoenix, in Tempe, and uh, from the very first machine, the T-Jet. So yeah, it's uh, it's been uh, 16 years for me with DTG. Amazing. Jeffrey? Yeah, I, I sold uh, direct environment printers for digital art solutions for several years, a few different makes and models, some that uh, were were hits mostly misses but uh <laughs> some on the cutting edge some on the bleeding edge right <laughs> all that was, uh, at the beginning of direct garment printing so you know it's come a long way since then well right. it's a privilege for me to be able to hang out with you guys and uh listen and learn every time we do this i learn i pick up something because of your answers and i appreciate that you are both um, accurate that you're both honest um, that you're not predatory salesmen, that you are interested in making sure that this is a fit and a match. And I know that's what our clients love most. And they can see a clear difference. When a prospect walks past our booth versus others, they are interested in you two because of your personalities and because you have a genuine care to make sure that you're there to help their business grow. So kudos to both of you for doing that and being the guys that you are. All right, enough bragging on these two. Let's put some context behind why we're doing this this morning and where these top 10 questions came from. I mean, Terry, maybe we'll start with you and Jeff, please add in anything you've got, but what, what is the deal with these questions? Why do we hear these questions over and over and over again? Well, first of all, Jay, it's a, th this is fairly new technology, you know, 16 years uh, and only 14 years with white ink. So it's, it's, it's in its infancy. So uh, a lot of folks just don't understand the technology. And, and the flip side of that is there's so much misinformation out there. And that's, that's true of all garment decorating. Um, there's so much misinformation, uh, some of it uh, unintentional, some of it intentional to, mm. to draw attention to one machine or another and, and, uh, and, and try to possibly um, talk down <laughs> some, right. some other equipment. So so people come and, and, and they're very, very confused. So, you know, we talked to a lot of folks at trade shows, uh, you know, uh, Jeff and I deal with the, the live chat at Equipment Zone. So if you, if you go on there, chances are it's going to be either myself or Jeff answering and, and, uh, or, or a phone call saying, okay, uh, I've talked to five people. I have five different answers. Help me. So yeah. that, that's kind of where we are. Jeff, same thing. Where do you, where do yeah, you go? That, and I'd just like to add, there are a lot of people who, um, are, are just looking to start a new business and you know what a great business to get into printing t-shirts you work with graphics you work with people you work with small businesses it's a great industry it's a lot of fun and so there's a lot of people who want to jump in and they just have no idea they haven't they haven't ever seen the technology they don't know what it's all about yeah. so a lot of times they don't even know what to ask and so as we converse and we start talking about what they want to do these questions just start popping up right well, I, I couldn't uh, appreciate your answers any more than that because I recognize how many events and trade shows you guys go to. What is it, 15 a year? Easily. <laughs> Maybe more, probably up to 20 events a year when you start including some of the training events that you do. And so if you add right. that up over the last six years, Terry, that's like 100 plus events. Jeff, same yeah. thing. 
Yeah, exactly. it's, uh, it's, it's about 14 or 15 for me. Terry does a lot more than I do. Um, I'll tell you, my wife is really anxious for this. Uh, <laughs> for me to get back on the road <laughs> every once in a while. When's your next show? Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, it's right there. <laughs> that is outstanding. I've been doing a lot of erasing on Terry's big book of travel and moving it to the end of the year. So uh, I, uh, I don't think any of us are going to be home uh, late summer and fall. <laughs> oh, man. September, October, we're just like... <sighs> starting to crowd up a little well let's get started with some of these questions guys thank you again um also want to give a shout out to the folks that have tuned in over 70 participants live uh one thing to know is that we have our webinar page set up now on equipmentzone.com so please visit equipmentzone.com and go to the webinar page you will see it from our home page it's in the right hand corner and we have future webinars that are already loaded and we have previously recorded webinars that you can watch so that's my little shout out to the webinars um, Terry, let's start with you. We'll, we'll okay. ask you number one. And then Jeff, if you have anything to go back over the top, please add in. So question number one to Mr. Combs, what, what is the maintenance on this machine? Question mark. Well, I think really what the question is, what, how does that compare? How does the cost compare? Sure. Maybe you could touch on that because I know that's probably the number one, one of the top questions for sure. Sure. Well, uh, maintenance is very simple. And uh, with the F2100, easier than even the F2000. So uh, when, you, when you come into work in the morning and you turn the machine on, uh, the printer is going to say to you, shake the two white ink cartridges. Now, you have to do that with all DTG printers, but this printer will tell you, you know, to do that. And, and you can lie to the printer and not do it, but uh, just take them out, shake them a little bit, put them back in. Uh, and then there's really nothing to do until the end of the day. And at the end of the day, you're going to take a swab. You're going to wipe around the capping station. Epson says to do it once a week. Uh, our techs say do it every day. And then when you turn the printer off, it's going to go through a cycle that uh, it's going to pump cleaning solution through the, the print head down into the capping station and out and flush out into the waste tank. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize that you don't necessarily get clogging in your in your DTG printer because of, of ink in the printhead. You get clogging because the capping station gets blocked up. Gotcha. And if that's flowing freely, then then that can pull ink out. So that cleaning process uh, does not, uh, you don't lose any ink in that process. Uh, so your cost, there's a cleaning cartridge. It's $18.95. It's going to last you about two and a half months. So it's about $8 a month in cleaning solution. So it's pretty inexpensive uh, to, 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 to do. A lot of direct-to-garment printers require you to, uh, through the day, you're going to take a swab and clean off that little wiper blade. And uh, Ooh, that wiper that, blade, a little he wiper says, blade, looks like a tiny little windshield wiper. Yeah. And, and, the first thing that if you see that wiper blade, that means that machine is converted over paper printer. It did not start life as a DTG printer. And you have to clean that wiper blade off uh, throughout the day because if, if ink dries on it, it'll become stiff and it, and it, uh, it won't clean the printhead. But the Epson, uh, both the 2000 and the 2100, have a, a cleaning cloth and, and, and it basically a fabric goes across and cleans the print head. And so you'll replace that, um, that print head cleaning kit after 1500 prints. Now, uh, if you're printing all color garments with a white underbase and a color print, uh, that's going to be two prints. So every, every pass of the print head. So uh, after, you know, roughly 750 color prints with a white underbase color on top, Right. You'll replace that, but it keeps the print head okay. perfectly clean all the time. So Terry, you said something I want to follow up on. You said Epson asks us to do something once a week, a maintenance move. And then you said our techs will encourage people to do that same thing once a day. What, what is that that they're doing? They're, uh, they're wiping around the capping station. And okay. the capping station is just where the print head parks. And, and our techs say that because if it gets a buildup of ink on there and it, and it dries, it can keep the, the print head from seeding uh, properly and gotcha. air can leak in there. It's water-based ink. So, okay. uh, so you, you want a, a really good seal there. And again, uh, our techs like to do it every day. It takes about 15 seconds to do. So It's no big deal, right? No, no big deal. And it's okay. just one of those things. I think one of the reasons our techs say to do it because if it's a once a week thing, uh, they're afraid that that the the the, uh, the operator will forget about doing it. If you okay. do it as a as a as a precaution every single day, it, it's just uh, uh, it's going to keep that print head uh, seated properly and uh, reduce any risk of clogging. Perfect, Jeff. Anything to ask or answer or clarify? 
Absolutely. I just want to say that one reason why I love to sell the Epson printer is because that maintenance process from a user's point of view is extremely easy and inexpensive, uh, better than any other printer I've ever looked at on the market. It's why I wanted to come work at Equipment Zone and why I want to sell Epson printers so that I can look at clients and say, yeah, when it comes to maintaining this thing, mm -hmm. it can't be any easier or simpler. Um, I would just point out also another thing that I love about the maintenance process. If you ever needed to do a manual head cleaning, meaning uh, maybe you do a nozzle check and there's a few lines missing in your cyan or maybe in your yellow or your white, whatever. Epson has designed a print head that you can clean that with a light, a medium or a hard cleaning or a heavy cleaning. But you, you'll do a light cleaning and 99.9% .9 of the time it's going to fix that and it's just pennies to, to do that. And you can choose to clean there, there are eight nozzles in that print head and you can choose to clean just two at a time. So you're not flushing unnecessary ink through all of the nozzles. Uh, gotcha. Right. That's smart. So they have, they have come up with a very efficient way of doing that to save you the, the most amount of money possible, better than any other printer I've seen out there. Well, Jeff, you do a mighty fine job. I'm sure Epson is proud as well as Equipment Zone. We know we're, we're, we're lucky to have you on our team, but you know, I got to follow up to both of you, neither of you. Why do I, and I'm, and I'm, marketing guy. I go to a lot of the trade shows. I'll typically be there for a day or two. You guys like to kick me out as quickly as you can. I don't know why. Um, but I hear, I even I hear this. Is, this. is this just misinformation that people are saying that it's expensive, that the Epson F2100 has an expensive monthly maintenance cost? Because I've heard that. And that is not true at all. Uh, but again, right. when, when you do the, do a, as uh, Jeff said, a nozzle, nozzle check and you just do a couple of channels, you're talking about maybe 38 cents in, in ink loss to, to flush that, that, uh, okay. to, to do that, that cleaning. That's um, nothing. Yeah. And even if you do a heavy clean, you're talking about a couple of dollars, but that, that that's going to be very, very rare for you to do that. And then again, the cleaning solution is only $8 compared to uh, say the, uh, the, the brother GTX, it's about a hundred dollars a month in cleaning solution to keep that printer running. So uh, plus lots of, uh, lots of, uh, a flushing of ink in that printer as well. You're not going to see that with the Epson printer. So is this just old misinformation that they're still kind of pushing out there? Like the previous version was a little bit more maintenance heavy. Most, this one yeah, is not. Yeah. A few years ago, there was a, uh, there was a flushing of the white ink that you had to do and it, it was costly, but okay. that, that hasn't been necessary for years in the Epson printer. So this is the start of the third year of the Epson F2100, correct? That's correct. Okay, so come on, guys. Let's. I don't know if it's competitors or just old info from an old T-shirt forums post, but uh, you guys have successfully <laughs> debunked the old misinformation, and I appreciate that. Let's move forward to question two, Jeff. I'll throw this to you first. Sure. Um, can I turn the machine off, Jeff? Yes. Okay, okay. Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I will uh, concur yes. with, with Jeff. Affirmative. Yes. So we have yes, we have I concur and affirmative. Okay. Well, I, I can expound on that. If yeah, you like. please do. Because we get this question all the time. What is the deal? Why do people ask us this? We get asked this because um, there's a lot of printers out there that you don't turn off. Um, they've started to tell people that you can turn them off because this has become a, a concern for them. And because the Epson can be turned off. But in reality, oh, okay, okay. You, so I know you're talking about the other guys, and you're just being yeah, polite you're about the other guys. When 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 you purchase those printers, even if they tell you that you can turn them off during your setup and in your your training phase with them, they're going to tell you to go ahead and leave those on all the time so that they can do automatic cleanings and flushing mm -hmm. and keep that print head from drying out. With the Epson, and this comes from Epson, this isn't an equipment zone thing, Epson tells you that you can turn it off for up to two weeks at a time and not worry about it, which is phenomenal. It's amazing. Uh, after two weeks, you're gonna wanna turn that on, run a nozzle check, maybe print a shirt or two, and then you can turn it back off. When you turn it off, it does a cleaning cycle and you can leave it off for another two weeks. Okay. We've actually had ours off for, well, I know Epson's listening, so. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, spill, the spill, spill the, the beans, truth. man. <laughs> spill the beans, brother. The truth shall set you free. Well, we like like we said, we do a lot of trade shows. So we're gone 
for, for up to a week at a time with nobody in our Arizona shop. Right. Because we don't get back in there for another week. And then we turn it on, we do a nozzle check. We might have to do a light cleaning because we're in a very dry climate. But uh, we've had that printer, one of the first ones, the first F2100s made. We've had it for three years now. We've never replaced that printhead. So let me ask you this then as a follow-up to that, Terry, you can jump in and expand. I, I hear from our own clients, well, I just leave mine on. Is that okay? You know, it is okay uh, because here's what's going to happen. Every six hours, that printer is going to go through an automatic head cleaning. Now, um, uh, but you, you, can, you can turn it off. You don't have to leave it on. And a lot of that comes from misinformation on the internet because many printers you have to leave running all the time. Uh, for instance, you, you might, uh, we have people come to us and say, well, do, do you have that new wet capping station that keeps your print head open? That, that's just hocus pocus. That is... Uh, <laughs> That's just a that's just a way to keep that print head that wasn't meant to be a direct to garment printer print head uh, open and running and and so leaving it running twenty four hours a day just so it's pumping ink pumping ink and and, and the reason for that and and uh, uh, most of the printers on the market today are converted over paper printers they did not start life as a direct to garment printer which means you've introduced an, a different ink system into that print head that wasn't meant to go into it that's why you hear things like you must run the printer 24 hours a day. You must print a shirt every day. You must, uh, if you leave the printer for more than three days, you have to flush out the ink. That's because that print head was not meant to, to carry that ink system. But, you know, and, and, and I don't think Jeff wanted to say, but over Christmas, and we have a prototype Epson printer. It's never been serviced. We had one of the first six F2100s that came to, um, came out to, uh, to the marketplace. And, and, and we we over Christmas we left that machine sitting turned off for three weeks. Came back in, did a head cleaning, and started printing shirts again. So, well, I think you guys have addressed that. That is important information. Let's move on so that we can make sure to get through our list. We've even had some comments about, "Hey guys, come on, let's pick up the pace." I can appreciate that. We like was this. that Harry Oster that said that? <laughs> it, it was not. It was not. But it was good feedback. So, question number three. We'll start with Terry, then Jeff. You can jump back over. What else besides one hundred percent cotton T-shirts? Can I print? Well, keep in mind that uh, this is a water basing system. This is true of all direct to garment printers. 100% cotton is your best, uh, your best substrate to print on and ring spun cotton better than others because of the thinner threads, the smoother surface. Uh, can you print blends? Absolutely. Uh, higher cotton content blends like a, uh, like a, a sweatshirt that's an 80-20 prints beautifully. Once you get down to a 50-50, uh, you, you might have a little bit of dulling of the ink, but you can, you can manipulate that. You can, um, you can lay down two layers of pre-treatment, you know, pre-treat, dry it, pre-treat, dry it, and, and get a, an acceptable, saleable product uh, on that, uh, on a, on a 50-50. But, um, you know, and, and uh, I don't know if we're going to address polyesters, but, but you can certainly make it work. You know, Jay, one of the things that you, you hear out in the marketplace is, um, our printer can print polyester. Ours is the only one that can do this. Here's the secret about DTG printing. What you can do on one DTG printer, you can do on all DTG printers. What you can't do on one, you can't do on any. So the difference is some people say, can I print polyester? Yes. Should I? Probably not. You're not going to get a great print. It's a multi-step process that's, that's not very profitable. But um, there are a lot of substrates you can print on, but there are a lot of great 100% cotton products out there that are ideal for any DTG printer. Yeah, well, uh, Jeff I printed out a list of those shirts. Um, I don't know if, if you can see this, but uh, this is our graphics team right here at Hard at Work. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least it wasn't. At least it wasn't like Jimmy Fallon's at style where he has his daughter in crayon. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that, huh? Yeah, so I can email you this list, or Terry can. Um, I didn't know we, this. These are sure that have. we have tested, but it's important to know too. Jeff, he's all prepared. What's that? I said, look at Jeff go. He's like all prepared. Yeah, you 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 want to make sure you're not just paying attention to the um, to the brand, but also to the product number is critical to what you can print on. Also, I am uh, wearing a tri blend, and uh, I just thought I'd do a little demo here. Let's see. What are you wearing? This says same shirt, different day, right? I, I think it should say now same shirt, same day because of kind of what we're going through. But uh, <laughs> or, or because you've worn that shirt for a week in a row. Is that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, I'll tell you, 
I, I love the tri blends. They're, awesome. they're comfortable. This is a district made. The tri blends, um, some are hits and some are misses. So you need to talk to us about which ones to get. So, so it's not just about cotton. Okay, and, and perfect. You guys nailed that one. Quickly, before we move forward, to, but as a follow-up, besides T-shirts, Jeff, what else? What is one, of, one or two of your favorite things to print besides a T-shirt? Uh, I love the hats. We have a, a platen from Captain Platten that can print on the front and along the bill of the hat at the same time. Yeah, you could use that. But I didn't print your this. Hat is a structured hat. It has to be on non-structured hats. Uh, we have on our website a video of that, also a video of printing on high top canvas shoes which are amazing sleeves are really uh, long sleeves are a big deal for the youth printing along the sleeve um, yeah. that can be tricky so you want to talk to our support team about doing that uh, so yeah there are a lot of different options terry what about you what are one or two of your favorites besides a t-shirt I, I love denim it, it looks very very cool you know to print on on on, on jeans uh denim jackets uh, that sort of thing they it's 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 one of those things that people don't think about because uh you know they think wait printing on jeans but well yeah <laughs> uh, sweatshirts back there i see you pointing you see, you see something behind me somebody please say sweatshirts let's see yes i'm gonna say hoodies ah yes we're, we're in Arizona. we don't wear a lot of hoodies I mean, that's that's yeah. that's my winter wear right there right my, uh, winter jacket yeah for anybody who doesn't know uh, all of us work out of our tempe arizona office so you know so quickly uh, Ricardo, if you have questions specifically about the F2000 upkeep maintenance, please check in with our, our uh, tech team. They'd be happy to help you with that. Um, and style recommendations for sweatshirts on our website, you'll see our favorites. Um, we really appreciate two, two vendors that come to my mind and guys feel free to correct me, but Cotton Heritage has great um, sweatshirts and hoodies as well as just hoods. And you can go to our website and actually purchase sweatshirts and hoodies. And I have no idea if Just Hoods is still open and operational, but I do know that Equipment Zone is. So just thought I'd answer those two quick chats. I got, a, well, I got another graphic here. Whoa, <laughs> go look at to that. Equipmentzone.com. And uh, this is also the address for the store. You can screenshot that or we can email that or you can just go to equipmentzone.com. I think I'm going to have to buy Jeff a taco after this because this <laughs> guy is super prepared with those graphics. Do it with free delivery these days. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, Jeff, I'm going to throw this to you. And then Terry, you can give us the, uh, the clarifying or additional comments. Jeff, uh, question number five. Actually, we skipped. Jeff, question number four. Can I take this printer to an event? Is it mobile? Yes. Okay, Jeff, <laughs> thank you for being so clear. Maybe you could add a little spice to that. So great opportunity uh, to take this printer to events. It's designed for mobility. You can secure the print head, tilt it on its side to get it through your door, get it into your van, take it to a, a dog show, take it to a horse event. Um, you want to be careful of dust at some of those places, but um, this is very popular at those type of events. You could go to, um, I have a client who took one to, um, to uh, a, a track meet for high school where they have what is it, five different schools running at it that my daughter was in and I saw him printing there. So printing on demand on site is a premium and people will pay for it. Boom. It's like, if you're not planning on that, wow. So I guess that means, and Terry, correct me if I'm wrong, you can actually tip this printer on its side to move through a doorway that is less than 36 inches wide. What? Insane. Exactly right. And with ink in it, you can turn it on the side. We've, we, on. we've done it a hundred times, as you know, when we do, uh, when we do seminars at the trade shows, we'll show up at the seminar, seminar room and it's a single door. So up on its side with ink in it through the doorway. And, and, you know, let me add something to that as well. Uh, because all DTG printers need to be in a, in a an office type environment with 40 plus percent humidity, but you can take it out of that environment. And we do it at every trade show. There there is no uh, no amount of environmental control at a trade show. <laughs> so we 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 ship our printers with ink in them. We wheel them out of our crates. Uh, we we do a head cleaning uh, if necessary, and just start printing. And so we'll be at a trade show for three or four days. Uh, outside of its environment, you just want to get it back into its environment as, as quickly as you can, uh, you know, back into uh, climate control and, and uh, humidity control. But 
you can certainly do events and, and, and a lot of the printers on the market, you cannot do that with some printers. You, you cannot, uh, you must have a, a technician from the manufacturer move that machine for you. So the Epson, the Epson is, uh, is meant to do onsite printing. And, and Jay, as, as you well know, onsite yes. printing is, is magic hot right now. Hot magic. Right now. Could not, could not have a better printer in a print on demand live event. Couldn't have exactly. one. Nothing could be better than that. So I, we have a PDF document or some documentation that we could give from our tech department that would be able to show some of the instructions on how to do that, correct? Correct. So they could email you for that information. Okay, great. So Jeff, back to you. Uh, let's go with another question. Um, can I use a conveyor dryer to cure the prints? Because a lot of, a lot of our, a lot of our customers, our screen printers already have a conveyor belt dryer. So is there something special about that? Does it work the same dryer? Maybe you could talk to those points. Sure, absolutely. Uh, conveyor dryer, I love them. The, uh, we work with a company called Vastex. There are other um, manufacturers that make them, but they, are, they make a conveyor dryer specifically for direct garment printing. They are different than the ones that are designed for screen printing because curing the ink is for, for direct garment is completely different than it is for um, for screen printing. And the way it's explained to me with direct garment printing, that heat goes ramped up and it stays steady for a long period of time and then comes down where with uh, screen printing, it's more of a, a spike and a down instead okay. of a, a straight up and across. So if you're looking at getting a conveyor dryer, absolutely, we sell the Vastex model. Um, and you can call and talk to us more about, there's a lot of different sizes, widths and lengths and speeds. And, um, and we can, if, if that's something that you want to do, I love the feel and I love the look after it goes through. It feels a lot more like a screen print um, when it comes out. Terry, anything to add? It's conveyor yeah, belt dryers. Usually when we see someone, someone using a conveyor dryer, it's when they have multiple uh, F2100s or F2000s. So we have a, a, a decorator right here in, uh, in Phoenix he has five F2100. So uh, on his on his uh, fourth and fifth uh, printer, he bought a, a Vastex conveyor dryer. Uh, and, and it's going to be uh, more efficient. But uh, most of our customers who have one and two machines use a, use a heat press to do the curing. Perfect. Well said. Thank you, gentlemen. Terry, let's throw this one to you. Uh, and this comes up. <laughs> this was probably number one. We moved this down on purpose. How many prints can I print in an hour? Or how many t-shirts can I print in an hour or a exactly. day? Or... Well, uh, first of all, we, we hear a lot of this. Um, well, I know the Brother printer is faster. It, it's not. <laughs> it prints white and it prints color right behind it. But, but we've done side-by-side -side comparisons. We have, a, we have a customer that has a, a GTX and an F2100. We had him print the exact same file side by side and, and the Epson actually printed it uh, about three or four seconds faster, even though it prints the white, comes back and prints the color. But on average, and, and here's, you know, this printer can print 16 by 20. Most t-shirt prints are 10 by 12 or fit within 10 by 12. So gotcha, when gotcha. we give an average, we talk about a 10 by 12 image. And if, if you don't believe me, go to your t-shirt drawer and measure those prints. And by gosh, most of them are gonna fit within 10 by 12. And uh, so a, a white shirt, basically no under base. It's going to be about 45 seconds to print. A color shirt's going to take about two, two minutes to print on the F2100. And F2000, that same print's going to be about three minutes. But so uh, if, I, if, if I do the math, so it, let, let's say it's, it's two minutes and 20 seconds, every design is going to be slightly different. Is that true? Correct. Correct. So there's no real way you're giving us the best estimate you can. Correct. Okay. Exactly. All right. Well, that's a good estimate. So if we, if, if I were in production, I would be clocking things like start to finish. I would be pre-treatment. I would be clocking time to cure the pre-treatment print time, and then time back into the curing stage. And, and that might be different and maybe why some people are sharing misinformation about this system is slow or. Well, yeah. And because people look at it and say, well, gosh, that took 10 minutes. Well, well, pre-treating a shirt is what I call indirect production. I'm, I'm an old time production manager. That's indirect production, which means I'm going to do that separate away from my printer. And you can pre-treat shirts two months ahead of time if you want to. Okay. So most people pre-treat a quantity of shirts and they're there ready to print already pre-treated. So direct production is load that shirt, print it, unload that shirt, put it on the heat presser on the dryer, 
um, then then load another shirt. If you're using a heat press, then after that that next shirt is loaded and you hit print, then you're going to go over and cure that shirt. And and so you can get quite a few pieces turned. So print time is one thing versus production time. Okay, I got you. Jeff, anything to add on that? Because I know you get this question too. How, how do you best answer the how many shirts can I print in an hour? I have a standard response to that because there are so many variables that come into play in that. So first thing I say is, you know, it all depends on, on the size of your print, the print quality settings. And um, again, like Terry was talking about, are you pre-treating ahead of time or not? If you are pre-treating and heat pressing and printing all together and you get a nice workflow going, so I'm doing all three at the same time, I'm pre-treating a shirt and I'm heat pressing while I'm printing, I tell people on a 10 by 12 print, you can do about 30 in an hour on a dark garment and about 60 an hour on a white garment. Okay. So if I got 55 out in an hour, I don't think I would be upset with you. And if I got 33 dark shirts out in an hour, I don't think I would be upset with you because you've, you've set that very well in terms of an expectation that's manageable. It isn't ridiculous. And I appreciate that. So thank you for both being truth tellers rather than exaggerators. Um, leave the spin and the exaggeration to the marketing department. Um, uh, hey, aren't but, hey, you the marketing director? <laughs> uh, yes. So uh, follow up. How heavy is the printer and can two of us move it or should three of us move it? It's 183 pounds and you should, should have three people do it, although we've done it with two. Um, okay. To be safe, I would recommend at least three. Okay. Uh, time in the chamber, is that more important using a conveyor dryer? And what would all that temperatures and all that settings, where would we find that info? Um, we, have, uh, we have flyers on that and we can talk to you one-on-one -on -one about it because there's, there's different variables. There's different size uh, machines uh, where they set the, the, um, the heating elements at different heights. So your print might go through there fast or it might go through there slow, all dependent upon okay. the size of the machine. Okay. And there's a few different variables in there. And, so. and would, would a sweatshirt be different from a t-shirt, Terry? It, it would, uh, you know, because you have to get the entire uh, thickness of the fabric up to temperature because okay. where, the, where the ink touches the fabric, it's got to be at that temperature as well. The folks at, uh, at Vastex do have uh, have production numbers and that sort of thing that, they, that they, they've done a lot of research on this that they can share as well. Awesome. Okay. Uh, back to our previously scheduled questions. Um, where do you get artwork? We get the artwork and graphics questions a lot. Let's start with Jeff again, and then Terry, you can give us some qualifiers or some clarity. So people get their artwork from the usual places. They get it from the internet, which comes with a lot of issues. You could have copyright issues. You will definitely have issues with, uh, with quality and your DPI. Even if it looks good on the internet, it might just print really horrible. So beware about what you get from Google Images. Um, people get artwork from their clients. Yeah. And again, yeah. you, have a, uh, you have issues with getting good quality because they're not always um, up to speed on what good quality is and what you need and what formats you need. So you end up doing some cleanup work. Uh, you design your own. You can create your own artwork in Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, a Corel Draw, export it as a PNG format so that you have the transparent backgrounds, bring it into Garment Creator, do your final uh, preparations for printing and print. Um, a couple of other great sources in our industry for getting graphics. If you are not a graphic designer, if your clients give you garbage artwork and you can't find what you need on the internet, um, I've actually printed out some more. Um, what? Whoa! <laughs> what is going on over here? Yeah. So, <laughs> Dane Graphics. All right. Great Dane Graphics. I'm starting to think. I'm starting to think that Jeff's getting a little something from Dane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually used to work for Dane, and he's a great guy. He is. He's been he in is. the industry for a very long time, creating artwork specifically for the apparel decoration industry. We love him for all of the artwork that he preps specifically for direct garment printing, although he also preps it in other formats. So if you are not just a direct garment printer, you also do vinyl cutting or you do laser etching or you do large format printing or embroidery. All of his artwork is prepped for those different processes. 
but when it comes to direct to garment printing, it is fantastic and we love it. You can go onto his website and pay for a subscription to download his artwork. You can search his database, you can do custom graphic, you can customize the graphics on his website and okay. download it. Um, or you can purchase his artwork in volumes, which he sends out on jump drives with books. And that's at greatdanegraphics.com? Greatdanegraphics.com. And also on here, you'll notice this picture. Of, I have noticed that picture and I noticed there's an equipment zone logo in the bottom right hand corner. So what is that thing? What is, is that a book? Is that some kind of training guide? What is that? <laughs> Thanks, Jake. Thank, thanks for that lead in. That is a training <laughs> guide that Dane created specifically for us on how to prep your graphics in Photoshop for direct to garment printing. Yes. Awesome. And okay. We, we've had experts or, or people who have professed to be experts in graphic design and Photoshop, gone through that manual and just has blown their mind on yeah. the, the things that they have learned from it. And they couldn't be more impressed. So probably, probably the best hundred dollars you'll ever spend. If you're a DTG slash apparel decorator slash screen printer, you need to own that book. And we actually have it for sale right now on our online store. So that's a sweet commercial. Terry, anything to add to the art question? Yes. Um, most of our customers don't know what we need. And, and here's a, a quick example. My, my son, uh, he, when he first opened his, his sportswear business and, and using a DTG printer, one of his very first customers was Riverdance, you know, the, the touring company, because his buddy from fifth grade all the way through college is the lighting director there. And, and he mentioned that, hey, I do t-shirts. And of course, everybody at Riverdance wanted a shirt that looked like the, the rock and roll tour shirts. And, and he called me up and he goes, he said, dad, that this logo that they sent me is just horrible. When I blow it up to full size, it's just dots. And, and I said, you know, Riverdance has the right art. They just don't know what you need. So what they sent you was the easiest way to send a file, 72 DPI, <laughs> one inch by one inch, right? right? I said, just tell them this. You need that file, 300 DPI, saved at full size. Five minutes later, he said, they sent me a perfect file. So a lot of this uh, for these DTG operators out here, it's, it's really educating your customer. Tell them what file you need what resolution you need. And, uh, and uh, for the most part, most people have a file that you can use. So it's just a matter gotcha. of educating them. Very well. Jay, I just wanted to real quick add, um, because, and I know we're pressed for time, so I'll make it uh, quick. Um, a couple of other sources in the industry, um, digital art solutions. <laughs> Look at this they specialize guy. in vector graphics, okay? And? Dane, Dane specializes in bitmap graphics. Okay. Um, so if you, like, if you prefer working with vector graphics, digitalartsolutions.com. Also a, a great company that we like to work with, inksoft.com. And they have uh, special online tools for helping you create artwork and selling your product. Shout outs to Great Dane Graphics, Digital Art Solutions, and Inksoft. Okay, and Vastex. Those have been the four resources that we have um, just naturally mentioned. We have, we, we like those guys. We're telling you if they were our brothers, we would, we would let you know. So, um, we want to be as forthright as we can. Sure. Um, Terry, let's transition a little bit. We, we did already actually answer one of the questions, but one of the things we haven't started on is pre-treatment. So how much can we cover here? Cause I know, I know this, this is a big one and we could probably do a separate event and separate webinar just on pre-treatment, but maybe, what if I don't pre-treat or how do I pre-treat? Maybe you could start with those two. Well, in, in, any time that you print with white ink, you must pre-treat the shirt. If you don't, that ink will just uh, absorb into the cotton and, and disappear. So pre-treating, uh, for all the screen printers out there, when you print a dark garment, you print a white underbase, you put it into your flash unit for 15 seconds, you come back, you print the colors on top. And the, the reason you do that, that, that flashing holds that white ink up on top of the shirt. The same with pre-treating. What happens is when the white ink touches the pre-treat on the shirt, it starts to cure and it's, it stays up on top of the shirt. So anytime you print with white ink, you must pre-treat. Now, uh, a lot of folks will pre-treat even a white shirt. If you talk to one of our techs, they're going to say, yeah, pre-treat that shirt. Why? Because that's going to give you the most ideal image. I'm going to tell you it really depends on your customer because if somebody brings in a picture of the five grandkids sitting under the Christmas tree and you print that on a white shirt, 
um, grandma's going to go, oh my gosh, that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. If you pre-treat that white shirt and lay it down next to that one, they're going to say, well, that looks even a, a, a little bit better. Well, you, you know, you had me at that. That was awesome. You know, <laughs> so, so it, it really depends on your market. We have a, we have a, uh, uh, a user out in California who only sells to artists. He does uh, shirts for art fairs. Well, guess what? He pre-treats those white shirts because uh, an artist wants the ideal, yeah. most perfect image on that shirt. But, but uh, and pre-treating, the best way to do it is obviously with an automatic pre-treat machine. Second best would be a, a Wagner handheld paint sprayer. Anything else, pump bottles and and paint brushes and and paint rollers, things like that. Don't do that because. There are critical things with, with DTG printing. Number one is the right garment. Number two is properly pre-treating, and most people do it wrong. Number three is going to be uh, the, the graphic or the resolution of your image. Most people use too much pre-treat. So if that shirt has that stiff box around the image, that's too much pre-treat. So back off on that. Jeff, anything to add on pre-treatment? Have you heard of a company called Equipment Zone who may or may not, maybe you could confirm this for me, make one? An automatic speed treater is what I've heard. Yeah, well, you nailed it. <laughs> we make an automatic pre-treater and we make it specifically for our customers in mind. We make it simple to use, easy to operate, easy to maintain, but that it puts down the perfect amount of pre-treat every time you can adjust the, the location of the pre-treat. And um, at the end of the day, um, flushing it out and uh, maintaining it is super easy. Is that why you guys both giggle every time somebody talks about rolling it on with a paint roller or brush <laughs> or brushing it on with a paintbrush? Boy, man, that's what a waste that is. <laughs> Unnecessary. And, and if you've ever seen us at a trade show, we never do that. We're one of the few companies at a show where you can walk up to our booth and we'll pre-treat a shirt right in front of you and then cure that pre-treat and take it over and print it. And you'll never see us do that. And those prints look phenomenal. People are amazed. And then they take them home and wash them and they look amazing. I got to say it is impressive and it still baffles me that uh, even, even other Epson dealers don't do this. Sorry. I, I know I probably shouldn't have said that, but I'm just, I'm, I'm telling the truth. I'm a truth teller in these, in these tough times, Terry, I think it's important that we share the facts, the clear facts. So why Terry, why are we one of the few companies that would do that? What, well, what, uh, you know, it, it's really a matter of of actually showing the customer what they are capable of doing. And, and you know, some uh, some uh, resellers will, they'll only print their five images that, that they have practiced with. And, you know, if you walk up to us with a with a jump drive and, and you have a decent file, we'll, we'll print it right there in front of you. And you'll go home with this, this fabulous print because... We know that we know how to properly pre-treat a shirt. We know how to uh, how to prepare that file to print, and 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 our text will walk you through it. Here's the print mode I selected. Here's why I did this. Here's why I did that. And and we've seen uh, people at shows, by the way, who who they walk around with their flash drive and they'll pull out the shirts that they had printed at this booth and that booth and. And um, some of it's horrendous. <laughs> so so well, we we want people to see what the printer is capable of doing. And we'll do that for customers also that, that want to send us a file. We'll print it in our facility and, and send it back to you. I think it's important that people listening know, and there are still 74 people tuned in live, by the way. Thank you for spending your, your last 48 minutes with us. I think it's important that people understand that we've got nothing to hide. We would rather go through the process and even show the pitfalls or the, or the potential mistakes made Sure. So that it's a learning experience for everybody, specifically a prospect or a client. And so it's important to us to set that expectation to be clear because we can probably improve on that. And Terry, you, you, you've said this a hundred times, Jeff, you've said this a hundred times, you know, there's, there's variables here. It's not just the, the, the pre-treatment. It's not just the printer. It's also the graphic. It's also the apparel. And if you get all four of those things lined up and aligned, then your chances for success go through the roof. Exactly. Um, so anyway, 
Uh, I don't know why I got off on that tangent because somebody else is asking some other questions, but you guys did a beautiful job on that. Appreciate the pre-treatment. Um, garment Creator came up twice while we've been discussing this. It's come up in the chat and it's come up on a question. I want to let everybody know that we've already scheduled a future Garment Creator webinar, so please pay attention to our website. We'll have more information and dedicate solely to Garment Creator. Um, I want to ask you briefly, because we're running out of time, we have one, one other question I want to get to, but RIP Software or Garment Creator? Terry? Um, in the past, we would promote a, a third-party RIP software uh, because it would give you uh, more control over the underbase, that sort of thing. But today, Garment Creator, uh, they keep, they keep uh, improving and adding all those things that third-party RIP software would do for you. And uh, the vast majority of our customers just use Garment Creator, which is a, a free uh, software, a free print driver that comes with a printer. And by the way, it's both PC and Mac compatible, truly PC and Mac compatible. Jeff, anything to add there? I know it comes up a lot. Yeah. In three years, I've had one client um, call and say that he wanted a, uh, a RIP software. And that's just because that's what he's always used. Um, other than that, I've never had a client call me after having the printer and using Garment Creator call me and say, I'm unhappy with this. Is there a better solution? So um, because it's free, there's no reason to buy that up front. You can get the printer, try Garment Creator, and then if you're unhappy, think about spending another $1,000 on a RIP software, but um, I don't see the need for it. It's so interesting to me that when our techs go and do either live or as Roy is right now, virtual setups, virtual training, that question comes up a lot. And our techs have been very clear. They're not saying no to RIP software. They're saying if you have everything else dialed in and aligned, you'll be surprised by how awesome these presets are in Garment Creator and how much you can do. It may not be necessary. So save yourself the drama, save yourself the money, save yourself the time. Let's master these basics first and then see if that's a good fit for you later. And again, I think it's a, it's a compliment to both of you and your selling styles and to Equipment Zone by trying to be an actual what i would call a practitioner let's do this as if it was us what would we do what would jay do what would terry do what would jeff do and by taking it down that lane then then we can keep it real we can say well this is what i would do and here's why okay i just want to real quick add something to that because you hit on something about getting the basics down first i think if somebody is thinking about getting a rip software it's not because they think it's better than garment create i think what they're what's happening is that they probably have something else missing in their process that's making their print not look good. And so they go online and they read something about a RIP software improving their print. And so they want to gravitate towards that as an easy fix to solve that. When in reality, it could be the shirt you're printing on. It could be the way you're pre-treating. It could be your curing process. So um, I would make sure you have all that dialed in first before you ever even consider it because you're talking about another thousand dollars for a RIP software. And it's not easy to learn. And anyone who tells you otherwise has never had a RIP software. <laughs> and, and it's not magic. It, 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 no, it, it isn't. It magic. doesn't make your file have higher resolution. It, you know, you, you can get a, a great print with Garment Creator. So if you, if you don't have great prints, you need to be calling our tech support department. Okay, before we check any of the Q&A, I want to ask the last question. Uh, we'll start with you, Jeff. Jeff, how many washes can I get out of a print? Well, we say it's a 50 plus wash, but... I know that we've had shirts that have lasted longer than that. I've seen people come to trade shows that we gave them a sample shirt three years ago and the, and the shirt looks worse than the print. The shirt's falling apart and the print still looks great. Uh, the shirt that I showed you earlier, I've had this for about a year and I wear it often and wash it often and it looks fantastic. So we say about 50 plus washes. And, and to you, Terry, since you've been around the block a few more times than Jeff, wink. And you've also got a screen printing background. How does this compare in terms of longevity? What should we expect, I guess, is the question. The, the standard in the industry for what's considered a permanent print is 50 plus washings. And that, that means your favorite shirt, you wash it once a week. And it's, it should look exactly the way it did when, when you started. Now, the difference when you compare with screen printing is most screen printing is plastisol ink. It's PVC. It's a plastic uh, ink on the shirt. Well, when when that shirt is 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 dust in the landfill, that print's going to be laying there on the ground. But uh, this is a water-based ink, so when you compare, you need to compare with water-based uh, screen printing. And 
as the shirt deteriorates, you know, in, in harsh washing and, and wearing it out in the world, uh, the, the ink will deteriorate, deteriorate with, with the, um, uh, the garment. But I, I certainly have shirts that I've washed easily a hundred times with the DTG print and it's, they still look great. Absolutely. I can concur and give you the same anecdotal evidence for my own hot washer and my own hot dryer, which means, no, I did not follow the, the instructions. And certainly my kids have not followed the instructions. And I've just got to say that one of our techs used to print that, that New York space bubble print. I'm right. just going to give a shout out to Wade. I can't, I can't not do it. It's a killer graphic. And my kids have fallen in love with that. And he gave one to me three years ago. I guarantee you it's been washed more than 50 times. And, and I'm not exaggerating. It looks it looks fantastic. It surprises me every time I see it that the white is still so opaque and so awesome. It's just and, and again, it comes to po proper pre-treating, proper curing. As long as you have the, done those two things, you're going to get great washability and proper. And the, correct. Okay, with the five minutes left, five six minutes left, let's go into this Q and A. And and there have been some funny questions in there, some important questions <laughs> in there. Um, we, we will, uh, by the way, make sure that everybody can uh, follow up with Jeff and Terry, um, digitalartsolutions.com, inksoft.com, greatdanegraphics.com. Thank you. Um, yes, we can print hats. There's a question. There's a question from a gentleman called Matthew Rome who asks, can you print hats with this printer? Terry, let me send that over to you. You absolutely can. We have, uh, we have a, hat, a, a cap platen that will not only print the front of the hat, but print the bill at the same time. And, and people say, well, what do you do with it then? You just use a heat gun to cure that. You don't need to put it in a heat press. And here's why. The reason we have to heat press or run a garment down a conveyor belt or, or use a heat press is because of washability. Well, you know, you're not going to throw that hat in the washer. It's the same with uh, printing on tennis shoes. We just use a heat gun to, to cure that because... Yeah, yeah, maybe you're going to, and I, I've certainly had people say they've thrown a hat in the washer and it washed beautifully, but generally you're going to put it on the top rack of your dishwasher if it's a hat. And, uh, and there's a pro tip if you need to wash a hat, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, yeah, absolutely. You brown hats. Okay. And, and thank you, Matthew Rome, for that important question. And I'm appreciative of the fact that you enjoyed my cap. This was not printed on the Epson F2100 and I have three just like it. And I'll, I'll be happy to send you one if you would like, because I know you're a big <laughs> fan, big fan of the hat. Jeff, um, anything there that you want to, do you see the Q and A's or anything in there that you think you want to answer before we uh, say goodbye to everybody? Um, well, there are a lot of questions in here that we're not going to be able to get to. So we appreciate them. Um, if you reach out to us, uh, Terry at equipmentzone.com, Jeff.m at equipmentzone.com, uh, we'll be happy to, to get to those questions. Um, we'll save the ones that we can and try to email you uh, after the webinar or give you. Perfect. Them. Perfect. Well said. So we've had 70 plus 72, I think was the size I saw in unique uh, visitors and attendees. Let's wrap up with a few things before you tune out. There's some important information that I want to, I, I saved until now. So don't just say goodbye and click and go, you know, grab another donut or whatever you're going to do, Matt. Um, the thing I want to say is equipment zone is open. Equipment zone is open. Equipment zone is open and shipping. So um, is there anything I could say better than that? First of all, Jeff, if you've got some. Go to the online store. Uh, if you need ink, we have plenty of ink and supplies. And uh, we are working. We might be at home, but we are working. Okay. So in addition to Terry and Jeff both working, we have our, our several folks in New Jersey office. That is where our, our shipping facilities and our manufacturing facilities are. So if you had questions about speed treaters, when can I get one? You know, how, how much pre-treat do I need? What's the difference in pre-treatment? We have a whole lineup of webinars coming. We, we are going to do another version of this. It's a little bit more free form, less structure. We're going to take questions live. So we have lots of information that you can say, but Terry, I want to throw this to you as the last question. What makes equipment so different from all of the other, other Epson resellers? I'm just going to say it. Well, 
Here's the biggest thing. Uh, easily 95% of what we do is direct to garment, which means when you call our support, that person that, that's talking to you probably walked away from an Epson F2100 printing samples, experimenting to, to take your call. Anybody that answers the phone at Equipment Zone is, uh, is going to be a DTG expert. And, um, uh, you know, we, we've been at it for a long time. We were an original uh, reseller for Epson and, and, and we took it seriously. And, and we offer free support, by the way, to anybody that has an Epson F2000 or F, Epson F2100, no matter where you got it, because we want you to be successful with your equipment. So uh, I, it's free for as long as you own the equipment. Well said. Jeff, anything in closing, anything to future webinars that you want to talk about, previously recorded webinars that you were a rock star in? Is there anything like that that you want to bring up? Well, we, we will be recording a, um, a demo of the equipment, of me operating the equipment and going through the pre-treater and the heat press and the printer. And that's not going to be a webinar, I don't believe. We're just going to record that and something that we can send out that we can post on our social media and on our website. So if somebody wants to see the whole process explained from beginning to end, uh, we're going to do a video on that. Right. Uh, but yeah, just go to the webinar page and check us out because we have some great stuff coming up. Well, guys, I appreciate it. And I want to say thank you to you. I want to say thank you to everyone who tuned in. Please know that we are in this to win it and stay positive. Press forward. Hashtag press forward. Get it press as if, you know, printing press, <laughs> DTG press. Um, we appreciate the comments and the questions. We apologize that we couldn't get to all of them. There were, there were hundreds of questions that came in. Several of them were funny. Some of them were silly. Some of them were very important. To those of you who have uh, are our clients, we appreciate you. We thank you for your business. Um, we look forward to working through this time with you. Please stay tuned to our webinar page because we've got a lot more in store for you for the rest of April. Um, and we'll have some special guests joining us. And that's all I've got. So equipmentzone.com. I'm Jay. He's Jeff. That's Terry. And we appreciate you. Bye, guys. Thank you.